Hello and welcome to today's video overview of the ServiceNow Express Helsinki release. We'll be covering net new features as well as enhancements to existing functionality. To begin, single sign-on support has been added with an interface to LDAP and SAML connections. Under user administration, you'll be able to define these LDAP server records and connect directly to your AD environment. As we define a server record, You'll provide information such as the server URLs, distinguished name, password, and starting search directory. If you'd like to use SSL, that is supported as well as you can upload your certificate information. After you define your servers, you'll be able to define your OU definitions, which is available through a tree picker directly from the connected AD environment. After you've selected what table this OU information should go into, you can edit the transform map to properly map the data and attributes coming in from AD to that target table field. We'll cover the new SSO pieces in greater detail in another video. In addition to the LDAP functionality, you'll also be able to define SAML through single sign-on. Here, we allow you to set a SAML connection as a primary IDP. This will let you go ahead and actually have your users logging into your IDP's authentication page as opposed to the ServiceNow Express login. After they're identified, they will then be kicked back into the instance with the set user record that you've defined. Here in the settings, you'll be able to also define exactly what user field they will be used for authentication. The easiest way to set up the SAML connection is to put in an identity provider URL, which usually resolves to an XML document containing all the information regarding that provider. In return, you'll generate the metadata from the ServiceNow side to be provided with your IDP. Another new functionality piece is what we refer to as guided setup. This is a great tool not only for new users who are implementing but new admins who want to understand some of the basics of the platform. Guided setup can be used to direct your actions when implementing. It will give you the core basics on how to get the incident application stood up, as well as configuring the basics of the instance. Included with guided setup is also the new concept of embedded help. As users click in the administrators to different pieces of the platform to configure, such as let's say your people, users, they'll be able to see on the right-hand side contextual help based off where they are in the platform, including documentation links relevant to that piece of the page. In addition, certain applications have the ability for a user to take a tour. This will provide an introduction and step-through process to getting the basics for a specific piece of functionality. Another net new piece is improvements to the CMDB. Through Discovery's ability now to do application dependency mapping, as well as the support through Discovery for VMs. Users who don't have Discovery enabled will also benefit from additional CMDB modules and classes enabled by default. Included in addition is an integration to SCCM. This will allow you to pull data from SCCM and by using a MIT server, integrate it directly into your ServiceNow instance. The setup process for the SCCM integration is identical to Discovery. With the introduction of application dependency mapping for Discovery, we've also introduced the next generation business service maps. When we take a look at a business service map, we will now see a modernized UI for the rendering of these different relationships. In addition, your CI forms will now have a dashboard toggle option, which will show a unique dashboard specific to that CI. On the UI side, we can see the new map with the toggle for details of related records, the ability to apply filters based off specific criteria, and to re-render. Importantly, however, we can easily define new upstream and downstream relationships through a new CI relationship builder. The Relationship Builder will let you pick not only suggested relationships, but you can toggle this off to pick any relationships between two different CIs. 
After you choose a selected relationship type, you can apply a filter to see just a subset of CIs that are available. By simply checking the CIs you want to apply this relationship to and pressing the plus, you'll be able to immediately create those relationships between those assets. This is a quick and easy way to get up-to-date data on your business service maps, which can also become automated through the application dependency mapping, which is now a part of the discovery offering. Then those maps will be auto-generated for application to application and application to host dependencies. The next big functionality add comes into play with the concept of execution plans. Execution plans can now be applied to record producers. We will be able to, in the generated record data section, pick and define an execution plan that will be executed when that record is generated. The execution plans themselves have also been enhanced. In the execution plan task section, we can pick additional task types beyond the simple catalog task. When we go to define a new execution plan task, we will see a task type dropdown that lets us pick task types relevant to the record producer at hand. Any custom tables extended from task will be visible as well. In addition to the ability to define execution plans for record producers and having execution plan tasks based off task-based tables, we also have introduced the ability to conditionally allow record producer execution plan tasks to be added to the execution plan. Back at the sample record producer, you'll find a related list for execution plan conditions. Recollect that I've added one sample task to this sample plan. By defining execution plan conditions, this will define the cr criteria for what needs to be evaluated to true for the task to be created. So I'll be able to pick that task as part of the execution plan and define the condition set that needs to be satisfied. If no execution plan condition record is defined, the task will always be added by default. Now it's time to talk about some of the enhancements introduced in the Helsinki release. To begin, let's talk about some of the UI enhancements. Throughout the platform, there's been a few additional features added to chat. As users go in and they add activity to a record, when chat's enabled, they'll be able to come in and also send a direct message by simply clicking the icon of the user in the activity stream. In addition, when we go and we open the collaboration panel, functionality has been added for audio notifications. You'll be able to edit those audio notification settings in the same notification preferences as email and desktop settings are defined. In the global settings page, when we click into the cog, there's been a few changes to the system settings to make it more compact and simple, as well as a list section added to wrap longer text in the list columns. As we can see, the audio notifications piece has also been added as a global system setting. However, there's been bigger changes done to our basic system settings. As we navigate back into the platform and head into our basic configuration page and head into our basic setup system configuration page, you'll find a number of additional options available to you. When it comes to styling your instance, you will have a simple color picker to navigate and choose from that expands to additional branding color options for header, navigator, and tab and border options. When we come back in, we will also find tabs for time and language, additional language support has been added, email properties, which is extremely important in defining how you'd like to handle inbound mail, what designates a forwarded mail versus a replied mail, where to discard text, for example, if a company uses a standardized footer or signature and you would like to exclude all the text there, you can add it with this comma separated list the ability to define what mail headers should be kept, or in this case should be excluded. And in addition, the ability to automatically provision users from the defined trusted domains. Now, if you leave a star, all domains will be trusted. So anyone emailing into your instance who does not have a user account will have a user account created. 
Finally, you can pick the number of journal entries for notifications based off of additional comments or work notes that should be included in email notifications. For the chat piece, we've added a number of connect properties so you can choose to enable or disable the concept of connect or presence, which shows you when other users are on the same form. And in advanced properties, you'll be able to set commonly asked properties such as the incident closure after X days, as well as your session timeout period. Heading to the reporting piece of the platform, a new exciting report features have been added as well. The first big change is the addition of a map. The map type makes it very simple to visualize throughput of records based off the location defined on those records in context to your environment. For example, incident, we can see incidents by caller location and run that on a world map. You can also adjust how you'd like the map to render based off a number of map options relevant to your business. In addition, there's a big change in terms of our standard report types, such as bar charts. Not only can we do the traditional grouping and stacking, but you can now define additional group by options. Now these group by options will be toggles that you can apply directly from a homepage. This has made it extremely easy to have very similar reports consolidated on your home pages. For example, if I add a sign to color and category, when I run this report from the generated report, you'll now see the group by and stack by options that mirror the fields that were selected in the group by additional toggle above. This lets us very quickly re-render reports per the criteria that we're looking for, which is tremendously helpful in saving real estate on home pages of similar reports. Home pages have also been slightly tweaked. No longer do you need to save a report as a gauge to add it to a home page. We will find that now when we go ahead and we open our home pages, we have the option of adding these reports with the simple report section. When I go to press add content, which is now a new section on the home page, there will be a reports content type added, which will include the same table names and reports as the old create gauge functionality had. Visual task boards have also been enhanced. When we navigate to create a visual task board, we will see a couple of functionality points that have been improved and added. Here on VTBs, you'll be able to adjust directly to add a task to a lane or to hide a lane from showing up. You can also on the fly adjust the filter that has been used on the data as well as what field this VTB is based out of. This is done simply by pressing the I. In addition, there's a few extra options for the configurations, including the ability to simply drag and drop the location of lane. And finally, there's been slight tweaks to the knowledge application to make it even simpler to use. When we head into knowledge, we'll be able to see that in our searches, our searches can filter based off of questions with the social Q&A, or if it's based off the number of articles, which will be displayed here at the knowledge base level. When we click in and we search, for example, for email related help, you'll be able to see that you can toggle on or off what type of content you're looking for. In addition, for our import functionality, you'll be able to pick exactly what knowledge base and category a document gets imported into directly from the import screen. And finally, we've enhanced the UI behind notification preferences as well. When a user goes in to view their notification preferences by clicking onto their icon and selecting profile, they'll be able to see by table all the different notifications that have been sent to them and that they will be receiving. They have the option to unsubscribe by toggling off the option entirely, or they can go ahead and set a filter by pressing edit and adding an advanced filter. So only based off a certain condition set will they receive that notification. Keep in mind that in your notification list view, you can add the mandatory field. If that is set to true, users will not be able to unsubscribe. Thank you for watching. Additional information will be provided on the ServiceNow Express support sites documentation section.